Jake Vossick, I'm our Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Go. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Go. Dr. Jake, it's back to school week. I'm wearing my alma mater here today. Gotta, gotta rep when I can. I missed out. I know, I didn't tell you. Um, it's also the beginning of our fall fertilizer series. Folks are gonna wanna know a lot of stuff about fertility after everything we've talked about this year. So what's our first topic? Well, Katie, today I wanna talk about phosphorus fertilizer technology. Okay, so generally we want more technology, not less technology, but let's kind of talk about how phosphorus fertilizers change over time. I think your technology is gonna be a little different than like what we wear on our wrist. I think you're right, correct. Yeah. So as many of you probably know, the first phosphorus source that we applied was rock phosphate. Then we figured out how to make that more soluble when we made triple superphosphate. Then we had DAP. Then we had MAP. Then we found that, then we actually had ammonium polyphosphate, which is the fluid fertilizer that we use. And then we figured out that you could ban that phosphorus fertilizer to make it even more plant available. So as we went through time, we figured out how to make phosphorus more plant available, get more into the plant and increase yields. Okay, you mentioned triple superphosphate. Let's tell the folks a little bit more about that. So triple superphosphate is a dry form of fertilizer. It's O4060. How they make triple superphosphate is they bathe calcium phosphate rock that they mine out of ancient ocean deposits in sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid separates the calcium from the phosphate. You end up with phosphoric acid, okay? Then what they do is they dump some more because that ends up having a pH of around two or three, that phosphoric acid. Then they dump more calcium phosphate rock back in that very acidic solution and let that calcium phosphate rock dissolve, okay? To and bring up the pH. To bring up the pH, to balance the pH, correct, okay? Because you don't really want something super acidic going don't, out on these farms. Yeah, well, yeah, you, phosphorus, uh, phosphoric acid is a great fertilizer source. The problem is it's got a pH of two or three and it would eat up equipment and be dangerous for people. So we can't do that. So you have to balance the pH. In this case, they balance the pH by adding more calcium phosphate rock back to the solution and it brings the pH up, okay? okay? Now the problem with that is you're dumping more calcium back into your phosphorus fertilizer and we don't want calcium. Everything right. we do is to try to eliminate the tie-up of calcium and phosphorus or everything that we do anyway, right? So, so it was a step in the right direction, but it's clearly not as efficient as our current technology. Okay. okay, so bring us forward to our current technologies. So then we had MAP and DAP, and they were actually developed at different times, but essentially it's the same process, okay? So with MAP and DAP, what they do is they, again, bathe the, the calcium phosphate rock in sulfuric acid. You get, pho you, you get phosphorus acid uh, from that. Um, then you react in hydrous ammonia with the phos acid to produce products like 18460 and 11520, which are MAP and DAP and then they prill those into a granular form, okay? So you're making them back into a granular, small, dry. Yeah, correct, yep. Okay. With ammonium polyphosphate, which is what we mostly sell and manufacture, you take the phosphoric acid, you react it with anhydrous ammonia, and you keep it in a fluid form, okay? And then we ban that also, right? Which increases the availability. But let's, let's talk about triple superphosphate and why reacting phosphoric acid with anhydrous ammonia is a good thing. Why that's a change in technology. So when you react phosphoric acid with anhydrous ammonia, some of that fertilizer is now nitrogen, right? So that's why it's 11520 or 18460. And to keep this simple, we could go into a lot of detail, but to Please keep it don't. simple, <laughs> to keep it simple, that ammonium nitrifies to nitrate. And when that ammonium nitrifies to nitrate, there's acidity produced. And that acidity makes the phosphorus more plant available. And that's why MAP and DAP was created. That's also the same principle that we see with ammonium polyphosphate, which is our main fluid fertilizer source. But when you ban something like MAP, DAP, or ammonium polyphosphate, that enhances the phosphorus available even more, okay? And that's why we ban the ammonium polyphosphate. So we went through, we went through years and generations of phosphorus fertilizer technology, we are at the forefront of making sure that that crop has available, available phosphorus source. We don't want to go backwards. And the reason I bring this up is, you know, there's been some rumblings of uh, triple superphosphate on the market, and that's fine. But if you want the best phosphorus fertilizer technology, you want MAP, DAP, ammonium polyphosphate, and you want to band it. You mentioned that it was um, 
so we're a liquid suspension so we're staying in that so in plant mentioned plant availability because it's liquid do you lose do you lose it to the soil do you lose it to the environment does it wash away with the snow no because phosphorus combines with cations any phosphorus source rapidly combines with cations it's not leachable unless you get extremely high phosphorus fertilizer levels and then you have something called um, dissolved phosphorus but but that doesn't it, it, it's rare sure anything else you'd like to share with folks today on phosphorus well it's probably been a mouthful so far so we'll stop there katie okay next time we're going to talk more about phosphorus levels in the soil and plant uptake of phosphorus and talk where should you be at on that thanks for joining us today stay in the know with liquid grow 